Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. I understand that um, about 60% of the audience are San Diegans. How many of you Anywhere? are San Diegans? Oh, Raise your so. hand. And uh, keep your hands up. How many of you are Southern Californians in general? And the rest are foreigners. I understand France, Russia. How many Russians do we have here? <laughs> Maybe we can change some foreign policy. Or just encourage Vladimir, uh, Mr. Putin, to just keep doing what he's doing. Um, and and uh, uh, welcome to the Brazilians. Um, Entendo que existem brasileiros aqui. Bem-vindos todos. Olha, welcome. That's my tortured Portuguese. <laughs> Minha esposa é brasileira. Sim. E três filhos também. Uh, okay, so with that, I, <laughs> that's the first time I've ever had a chance to speak Portuguese at a podium. So we're as happy. tortured as it was, you know, we're happy for you, Gary. Yeah, and that, it made me feel good anyway. <laughs> Great. So listen, I've got three guys up here who are the, the personification of real estate development in San Diego. And uh, they all do different things, and we're going to get into that today. And they're going to tell you a little bit about the real estate development story in San Diego. But what's really interesting about these three gentlemen is they all have experience. In fact, most of their career trajectory has been in other places. So what you're going to get is sort of the San Diego story told by people who do a lot outside of San Diego. So you're going to sort of get that 30,000 foot perspective. And I thought that would really be interesting for a lot of you, uh, not just San Diegans, but for people that are from somewhere else looking at this community, because you're going to hear from people who have similarly looked at this community, but not just looked, but invested in this community and are tortured through our development and entitlement process over the years to, to make something happen. Um, so with that, that, what I want to do is have each of you just sort of introduce yourself. Uh, David Malmuth is, um, has international credentials. He's done a tremendous amount of work from here to Beverly to Hollywood to New York. And uh, tell us who you are, David, and what you're doing today. Uh, David Malmuth. I'm a partner with Idea Partners. And Idea stands for Innovation, Design, Education, and Arts. And along with my uh, partner, Pete Garcia, we are the uh, founders and the, the folks who have been um, promoting the idea of a of a innovation and and a, a job cluster in the Upper East Village. As Gary pointed out, I've been in the business for quite a number of years. Worked at Walt Disney Company and did projects in New York and Burbank and worked with Triza Khan, did Hollywood and Highland. And then five years ago, I had the good sense to focus on my own backyard. So I've been working for the last five years here in San Diego. So when you're seeing those movie stars at the Academy Awards once a year trip over the red carpet, he did that deal. That was his project. And so. Uh, um, uh, he's done a lot since, and he's one of, he's one of my favorite people. He's a uh, great San Diego developer, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what he's been doing in a few minutes. And then um, Nat Bosa, it's almost impossible to, to do a few seconds on Nat, but Nat, Nat comes from Vancouver, where he has virtually remade Vancouver uh, in, in his uh, mostly condominium residential high-rise projects and he's taken his show on the road over the years and he's done projects in Seattle and he's doing things in San Francisco and he's just and he has I think personally over the years revived uh, downtown San Diego and if you look at the western skyline if you take a walk over there the really interesting projects both in terms of their presence and their height and their architectural quality are all all Nat Bosa projects and he's doing one right now that is going to be uh, the most uh, uh, contemporary signature project he's done here to date. And um, he's, he, again, is like, we have a tradition in San Diego of um, Canadians coming to this town and developing projects. And so he's not the first, he's just one of a long evolution or continuum of Canadians that see opportunity here, and he's going to tell his story uh, to us right now. Yeah, welcome. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, I live in Vancouver. I started in Vancouver, and I've done uh, work in Hawaii and up and down the coast, the west coast. And uh, this is definitely my, what I would call my adopted city. I love it here, and uh, looking forward to build uh, a lot more great uh, homes in San Diego. And right now what that's doing is piercing the envelope in terms of pricing 
uh, in his projects, uh, in, in his most recent project downtown. So we'll talk a little bit about that today as well. And then Charlie Tortola is with is the CEO of uh, a president or CEO or everything. I guess they janitor. They gave me both <laughs> titles. I don't know how or why, but yeah. Military development. And, and Charlie is a uh, sort of an infill guy. He's done. Uh, He's done a little bit uh, of, of, of this and that, uh, lots of infill and, and uh, interesting projects uh, from Los Angeles to Orange County to San Diego. Welcome, Charlie. Thanks, Gary. And y para los, me los mexicanos, bienvenidos. Are you uh, just trying to show me yeah, up? Right. <laughs> Are there any Mexicans here just to, just, just to, call, his, to call his bluff? There you go. You spoke to nobody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks. And, by the way, it's an honor to be here on this beautiful Veterans Day in San Diego. I live in Los Angeles, but, uh, and to be on the stage with uh, two heavyweights like this. So, uh, thank you. So, Latera Development is uh, a residential mixed-use development company headquartered in Los Angeles, and we focus primarily on urban infill locations. And our uh, projects are uh, we have a couple in San Diego, we have two in Orange County, and uh, the balance of, oh, probably another 10 or so in Los Angeles County. Okay, so you're a busy guy. Pretty busy. And that probably describes everybody. Everybody's yep. got projects going on here and everybody's busy. Yep. And, um, and I think that uh, we really, I certainly we appreciate all of you being here today. So listen, um, we've all been in business in this town for a long time. Um, maybe I'll start out with this. Uh, how, um, in your view, how is San Diego different today than it was two or three uh, decades ago? Um, you know, how would you describe um, the San Diego today and, and the opportunities uh, uh, for development uh, in this marketplace? Maybe I'll just go backward and start with you, Charlie. Well, I think that as a market, there are more, this is a more diverse job base. So I think that's important. And, you know, as a developer, we look we start there. That's where we look. We look where, to see where the jobs are because we think the people follow the jobs, although we know that here in San Diego people also follow the weather, but, <laughs> but the jobs are very important. So I think that's for us probably the, the most key difference is uh, that more diverse job base that has uh, evolved. And I think part of it is the cross-border business, uh, but part of it is uh, you know, technology and the the other side of the economy that's developed around what was just a military-based economy. So, Nat, um, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I don't know exactly when, I can't remember, it was Horizon was the first one, yep. wasn't it? Um, when that was first done, uh, that, was, that was sort of a pioneering project, because we weren't doing vertical high-rise condos. What, what made you come to San Diego in the first place, and, and, and how's your market and your business changed over the years? <clears throat> Uh, we came, uh, I was doing some work in Portland, and I wanted to stay to do business also south of the Canadian border. And we were ready to go to San Francisco, but then I realized we were too late. So I told my property guy to leapfrog and go to San Diego. And I had been to San Diego a few times with the kids, and by mistake I ended up downtown once, and I thought I was lost. And I remember seeing a bridge. You were. Somewhere. Yes. <laughs> I remember seeing a bridge, so we quickly turned around and got out of town, what was downtown, and headed back to where we were supposed to be, SeaWorld and the zoo, and then headed back to Orange County. That's, that was my experience. But then when I came down in 98, for a different reason, I, we got out of, came from the airport, and uh, I really, I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. You know, I, I had some experience from Vancouver, what had happened, and there's all these parking lots, and uh, this great weather, this, uh, there's something wrong here. So we decided to start buying, and I was uh, in, in a hurry. And uh, we started Horizon, and of course, uh, we were forewarned that everybody had failed here, but I guess, well, that's the way it's it true. is, I guess. Yeah. And um, we moved on from there. And uh, we believe that this is, I mean, all, everything is here. We, I was saying to the city early on, the only thing you guys need to do is just uh, clean up the front door. The rest, uh, leave it up to developers. The, you don't need to do anything else here. All, it's all, the nature is all there. And um, Did they get and, that memo? 
<laughs> uh, they, well, they started, they did the first phase of the North Embarcadero. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But anyway, so having said that, uh, we have a lot of property here. We are, I uh, intend to be here for a while, if I'm around, and uh, keep on doing some uh, great looking buildings and uh, give San Diego great buildings that they, what the city deserves. Well, we're going to try to keep you vertical so you can continue to do vertical buildings. I guess that's, that's the model for you today. Okay. We'll come back to the stuff that you're doing in a minute because I think that's a very interesting story in itself. But I wanted to give David a chance to talk about uh, what he's doing right now in a whole different part of downtown. I mean, Nat's really concentrated on, you know, on, on the west part. As a matter of fact, I, I make downtown real simple. I divide downtown right on this street, right at the gas lamp. Everything to the west is western downtown, everything to the east is eastern downtown. We have, we have like eight neighborhoods here in the downtown area, but it's really that simple. The western part of downtown is mostly uh, informed by its relationship to the water. Either you see the water in the, in the office buildings or the condominiums or apartments that you live in, um, or you know you're near it, you have that relationship. But when you're on this side, when you move that way to the east, it's a different downtown. It's a grittier, more industrial, and, and most importantly, last to develop downtown. There's about 50 developable blocks still to go in the East Village area, and what we call the East Village area. And David is concentrating on some of those blocks. So why don't you tell us a little bit what you're doing and what you're trying to do to create some yeah, interest in that. Yeah, it's been an interesting arc. Well, while Nat was, bucking conventional wisdom and demonstrating that we could in fact do high-rise residential over the last 15 years very successfully, uh, which set off 15,000 units plus or minus. Guess how many net jobs have been created in downtown over that period of time? I'll help you, the answer is zero. zero. And we thought, well, there's something wrong with this picture. You know, how do we become a 21st century downtown if we're not growing jobs in our downtown? Because you can't have a great region without a great strong downtown. You can't have a great downtown without jobs. And so what we discovered is that the nature of, of, of the downtown employment base was it was a sort of 1980s style of downtown in terms of office space and the kinds of jobs. Mind you, over this period, there had been huge job growth, job creation in San Diego, up near UC San Diego and around. Everywhere Clark. else. Everywhere else, but not downtown, because nobody had focused with intention on trying to bring together the elements that c could create a vibrant, job-rich downtown. One of those elements is residential. Nat and I were talking earlier. Now that we have 40,000 downtown residents, we are right on the precipice of being able to generate the kind of downtown job growth, particularly in, in tech and in design and those industries that are the 21st century industries, we're right on that precipice. But East Village is the only place where we can do it because we got the land and the entitlements, yeah. and we can do the large floor plate kinds of buildings that these kinds of companies want. And at the same time this has been happening, there's been this ground up entrepreneurial thing that's been happening in downtown. So we have 72 startup companies in various stages of growth downtown. So we have this sort of organic growth of companies and people, particularly young people who want to work in those companies. And at the same time, we have this densification of residential, which brings a lot of amenities. So we think we are now poised to have a, 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 an explosion of job creation downtown, which will make us competitive with the Bostons and the San Francisco's and the Seattle's but we also have some incredible natural gifts in terms of our beauty and our weather. So we think ultimately if we can do this right, we can do it in a collaborative way, we can beat the pants off of all of those cities. So let me do this in reverse direction. Why don't you just keep going, Dave, and tell us about the project you're, 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 you just broke ground on. Right, so we broke ground uh, last week on Idea One, which is our first project in Idea District. It's mixed use, and what we're trying to target is companies and, and individuals who see themselves contributing to the 21st century economy. So we're creating a building that's all about collaboration. We're very intentionally creating spa spaces where people can bump into each other. And we're also trying to create the sense, the sensibility within Idea District. This is the place where if you want to launch the next great San Diego company, the next Qualcomm, this is where you want to be. And that can't just be us. That has to be done with lots of other initiatives. So we have a uh, which you should see while you're here. We have this great uh, temporary community gathering space called Courtyard. You know, we've got a, a, a K through eight charter school because great downtowns have families. They don't just have young people. We need across the age range. That's the first charter school K through eight that's been in downtown in forever. Uh, we have a fabrication lab called Fab Lab that started about six months ago. So all of these things working together. Oh, and a new public park called East Village Green, which will start construction next year. All of this within a 35 city block, 90 acre part of downtown, as you pointed out, which is the undeveloped part of downtown. 
So 2007, 2008 was tough on the industry, obviously, but it's been great for San Diego because what we, what we didn't do was just build a bunch of housing in a part of downtown that really should be jobs rich in addition to having a lot of housing. So we got great momentum now. Well, you know, it's really interesting. Um, uh, this is going to sound like an exaggeration, but it really isn't. This part of downtown that we're talking about, this East Village area, which, um, which starts one block over, really, is going through uh, a, a transformational change, the likes of which we've never seen in San Diego before. I mean, essentially what we're talking about is not just gritty industrial, but where all the social service agencies are for the homeless. We're talking about an area that not only was undeveloped and was the, the really the, um, uh, the, 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 step, the stepchild to the western part of downtown, but has all kinds of problems um, up until really just the last couple of years. And now if you just, you can go six or seven blocks to the east and all kinds of new projects are there, only really rivaled, um, certainly on the west coast, in terms of its scale of redevelopment, revitaliz revitalization by perhaps the Soma uh, district in San Francisco. And I think that, that's, a, that, that's a major deal. The flip of that is there's still dirt to be built on the west side. And, and uh, Nat has a brand new project on what, in real estate parlance, I will call, I will dub the 100% location in downtown San Diego and Pacific Coast Highway, um, uh, just right at the water. And he's just broken ground on it. Maybe you want to tell us a little bit about that deal, Matt. <clears throat> yeah, we broke ground in about January last year, this, this year. Uh, we're coming out of the ground, and uh, we hope to start marketing in the early in the new year. Uh, it's definitely the finest project that I've ever undertaken. Does that translate time. into most expensive to buy? Most expensive, <laughs> most expensive to build. Everything about it is, I just wanted to build something that is a great building for San Diego and a great building that uh, people from other parts of the United States or whatever say, Jesus, there's a real building there that I want to that I want to buy into yeah so basically I'm looking after part of that market but also I'm not just on the west side I don't want to sound like I'm just building those expensive stuff I'm also going to be building something closer to the middle of town yeah. I got some land there that is more affordable <laughs> but this one here is my definitely I like to call it a, quite an iconic building. And what's the name of the building? Of the project? Pacific Gate. Pacific Gate project. And um, it, and so and, and again, if you if you look at the downtown skyline, you'll see it really more than dotted with Nat Bosa buildings. It's pretty it's pretty phenomenal the level of contribution that he's made into this community. And at the same time, all this downtown stuff is going on. It's not the whole story. In fact, it, to be perfectly frank with you, it's not even the major story. In, down, in, in San Diego right now. This is a region of 3.2 million people uh, with tremendous uh, housing demand, most of it unmet, as my partner Nathan Mader um, uh, in great detail articulated to you uh, earlier this morning. Uh, and there's stuff going on um, all, over, all over the rest of the region. And some of the most important stories that we have to tell from the real estate development and community building standpoint aren't in these large projects and aren't in downtown. They're in the urban areas, the urban villages that surround downtown and even in the older suburbs. And there's lots of action going on uh, uh, throughout San Diego to try to revitalize our entire region. And Charlie's involved in a lot of that stuff. So why don't you tell us some of the stuff you're doing? Well, in, in uh, yeah, Gary, in, in San Diego at least, we have, uh, we have two active projects. We have one in the Skyline neighborhood of San Diego, which is southern, the southern part of the city. It's, um, it was, we bought some land from San Diego Unified School District that was excess land that had never been utilized. And so we bought that, and we're currently mapping it and processing it for entitlements for 37 single-family detached homes. Uh, they're gonna be roughly 5,000 square foot minimum lots, and uh, you know we're uh, designing them to be fit for, it's an older neighborhood, so it's an infill project, and we'll design them for uh, homes that'll be pricing in the high fours to mid 500s, so that kind of price point. That, that's, that's pretty cheap by San Diego standards. It, it is, but 
but I think it's right for that neighborhood. So that's, the, that's how we're designing it to fit. Right. And uh, sort of a, what I call a, a, a traditional architecture, but today's traditional. <laughs> so it's a, it's a tricky design to, uh, to fit. But, so that's, that's one of our projects. And then we have another in Chula Vista. We have a 97 unit uh, mm -hmm. apartment project. And that's south of the downtown area, yes. about 20 minutes on yes, the I-5 corridor. South. Is, it, is it a downtown Chula Vista or is it in the No, curves? it's uh, more what I would call sort of a suburban Chula Vista. Yeah. It's, uh, the eastern suburban Chula yes, Vista. Yes, right off the 805. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I think you have to look at Chula Vista as really a separate economy almost uh, with the cross-border business. Right. I mean, investor Sam Zell is uh, putting money into that, so you know there's probably something good going on there. Yeah. But, but I think, Gary, I mean, I think for us, uh, you know, what we're experiencing, you know, we have a big project in Hollywood that has a lot of creative office and some residential attached to it. It's a, it's a campus of retail and office and residential all sort of on one, in one area. But, but we're very uh, sort of, we're watching pretty carefully the political and social and entitlement work that's going on around us and that we're a part of. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a transition that's sometimes tricky, whether it's in downtown San Diego, where I know there's entitlements, I think, in place, right? Yes. So well, that's a good thing plan. for you yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, but where we go, typically, we have, where we have to blaze a new trail or we have to... Uh, you know, help the city sort of create the entitlements to make it work. And, uh, you know, there's CEQA issues, you know, or there's, there's uh, you know, neighborhood issues or whatever, pushback that is, it makes it challenging for the developer sometimes. And, and sort of that allows me to let you start that part of the conversation, Charlie. You know, amidst all this opportunity and economic diversity that I know Jerry Sanders and his panel spoke to uh, earlier and all this development that's going on and the values that are being created, it's very complicated to develop in this community. We do get pushback. We get pushback not just from people that are against projects, but we've institutionalized the pushback. We've got community planning groups, and we've got lobbyists, and we've got causes, environmentalists, and now we've got state legislation, not just CEQA, our environmental legislation, but we have green legislation and energy legislation, all of which are bundled together to make projects not just complicated, but often impossible. What drives you to keep developing in that environment, Charlie? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. Lunacy. I yeah. mean, <laughs> thank you. I, I mean, that's why I stay did, a consultant. Did We're all know, masochists. Did you know there was what a, can we notice you? a pause there? <laughs> well, you're from out of town. I got that part. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'll tell you, though, that the projects that we have right now, a lot of them are in cities that have redone or, or amended their general plans or they have new specific plans where they've said, we want more densification here. We want to be near transit. We want you to come in and be a developer here. And we're going to try to make it easier for you in some ways. And so, have they? And so, yes, they have. And so we're drawn in many cases to those kinds of areas and those cities and those projects because the, uh, you know, it's, it's the path of lesser resistance. Yeah, yeah. Two, two, two uh, points of comparison. So the idea district, we worked for five years, but the actual project, from the time we submitted to Civic until we had permits was six months because there's a downtown community plan, a master EIR in place. Yes, yeah, in place. You, you see, it, it, sort of, it sort of takes care of all right. the early problems. Contrasted with you, Costa Verde, right, which is at UTC, right. which, by, by the way, there's $5 billion of investment going to Costa Verde uh, area in the Tell UTC area. Tell me you want to talk about that deal today. Well, only as a point of comparison, okay. only to say that the project we're trying to do there, where we're starting our ER, EIR process, is going to be three years best case, maybe five years before yeah. we can get into construction. So, so and it's because there is no adopted community plan. Right. So everything that you need to do in order to make a project happen is by exception. So I think, the, 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 by the way, the UTC area is talking about is, is, is the area just east of La Jolla on the I, between the I-5 and, and 805 corridor, sometimes called the Golden Triangle. And that's where a lot of the high-end commercial office and residential development and retail development has been over the past uh, couple of decades. And now it's become second downtown because it's it really, got transit. It really has. Yeah. It, 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 it really has. Um, but I think that really what distinguishes downtown from the rest of San Diego, um, in, in a word, is that this is historically where the government sort of set up a process where they invite you to come here. They want you to be here. Yeah. They may give you a hard time, <laughs> but they want you to be here. Whereas 
we, we don't really have that in the other communities. We have what Charlie has articulated, which is on paper they want you there, but on the ground, it's a hassle. It's a, re it's a real problem, which creates this issue that Nathan was talking about earlier, where we have this now what I dub a perpetual imbalance between supply and demand. There's always demand in this market as our economy grows and diversifies, but we just can't plant enough housing units of any kind in the marketplace to sort of, to sort of accommodate that. So with the fact that um, you're invited to come downtown and develop here, and even though it, you know, there's a process and it can get complicated, Nat, why would you leave downtown to do something else? Why would I? Yeah, why are you doing something out of downtown? Uh, I'm not doing anything out of downtown. <laughs> I thought you said you were going um, in, in... No, 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 within downtown. Oh, you stuck, not you just on the west side. Ah, you're yeah. just going to go on the east no, side. No, just, no, no, just uh, around 7th, 8th. Okay, uh, yeah. that's no man's land. That, well, no that's man's land. No I like to be in no man's land. Yeah, we have no idea what turn that it into man's is. land. It's where my office is. <laughs> so you're going to put men where no men are. Uh, it's really, it's before. a sign of the maturity of East Village that Nat is now investing in East Village. I, and... I basically have made a decision that uh, at my stage, I want to be where I truly believe the majority of the, the big shift in population is what wants to live, and that is downtown. Right. where I do not need a car. There are some cities right now that uh, the maximum, San Francisco, the maximum uh, parking that they will allow you is half a car per, a car. per unit. So they don't want cars. In Vancouver, they are gonna demolish the viaduct going into the city. They wanna discourage you. So basically, at uh, this uh, city right here, it's just going to be in the next uh, 10, 15, 20 years. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be, I mean, we're going to look back and say, wow, how did it happen so quickly? Well, what other neighborhoods do, you, do all of you look at to have sort of the, the potential for the, the next big thing in San Diego? Any particular neighborhoods that really stand out to any of you, Charlie? Well, I'm going to stick with, well, let me just follow on to Nat, some advice for everybody here. If, if Nat's decided 7th and 8th is where it, He's you're going to follow? Go. That, that's where you should go. <laughs> <laughs> some people are leaders, some people are followers. Right. I, ex I, I accept both business models. Right. But, but for me, for us, for, for my company, uh, I'm going to say South, South County, basically. Uh, so where Chula Vista is? Yes, yes. And, and yes, because we're there. <laughs> but, but we're there for a reason, and we're there because we feel like there is a... Uh, a shortage of housing and we're in the housing business yeah. and we feel like we if we can meet that to some extent meet that uh, demand uh, then we'll be successful so in other words um, so the the further interpretation of the, the price points are lower right and just as I suggested earlier Chula Vista is a community that really does want you there they, 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 they've got a process that invites you there's a process that. but if uh, you conform I think yes and I would also say that the, uh, I mean, I got a report yesterday that the vacancy rate in our area is 1.8% yeah. for, uh, for multifamily. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even, I've been in the business for over 30 years. I didn't know it could go that low. Yeah, yeah. So. we're going to hear, I think you're going to hear a little bit more about that from my old colleague, um, emphasis on old, Alan Nevin, uh, when he talks about the apartment market later. We, we virtually have full, full occupancy. Um, uh, throughout the region, and yeah. certainly that's reflected in the in 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 in, in that market. Um, David, you you spoke to what I interpret to be sort of the certainty downtown. You you, you can come into the downtown markets, both of you, and you you know that that eventually you can get the you can get the, you can get the, the the job done. Would you would you contrast that to the experiences you're having um, elsewhere in San Diego, and what and perhaps what some of the solutions are to to to, to um, uh, to create some certainty. Well, yeah, I'm in a stage of my development career where I much prefer the experience of an idea district where you have people working together in the community supporting you versus the typical situation where it's confrontational because yeah. I don't want to be in a fight. You know, what we do in our business we think really enhances communities and unfortunately, you know, we're held in the, you know, the esteem or lack of esteem of, you know, sort of lawyers and child molesters, you know, and I take that personally. I, I think what we do in development really enhances communities. So we're, we're all felons. Yeah. Really. Right. So, so, so what we try to do to overcome that, and we're now doing this in our project at UT Siri, is we really do embrace the community. We say, look, we're here to try to do something that you're going to love. That's just being a smart real estate developer. Because if we end up in a confrontation, 
what's lost is the opportunity to do something that can really be special. So um, we're doing an open house Thursday night. We're inviting everybody in to see the project that we're proposing. And this is before we submit it to the city. We actually have a chance to get feedback and make the project better. Um, we have a city that right now does not embrace density outside of downtown, period, end of discussion, notwithstanding that we're putting billions of dollars into tran transportation infrastructure. That dialogue has to change, and we can't, as developers, we can't change it by ourselves. We need leadership from planning and leadership from the city. We actually need leadership from the planning groups to start to embrace the idea that you can do smart transit-oriented projects and they can enhance the community and they can be at an appropriate scale. We really haven't quite turned the corner on that conversation yet, but what we will do in those projects where we have an, a chance to make an impact is try to do it the right way and find community partners who want to work with us and you know, try to do great work. Um, Nat, um, where I want to sort of end this, I think, and I want to start the ending of this panel with you, um, because you've created this sort of contemporary museum marketing space called Rethink Downtown. Um, and I had a little bit of a part in, in it, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, where I understand you're going to all have a reception, I guess, tonight at. And it's, it's worth going to the reception, uh, if, perhaps if not for the alcohol and the food, to see the space that, that Nat has created. It's really very, very interesting. So you, you really should come. But I, I sort of want you to take a leap 20 years into the future. And uh, give us your vision of what San Diego uh, should look like or will look like. And, and, and ultimately, I'm going to ask how you plan to contribute to that vision. <clears throat> I've been here for 17 years. It seems like forever. Though. I started Expo 86 in Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver was not very much. The government bought all the land, industrial land, on False Creek, in the edge of downtown to clean it all up and uh, for the fair. And after that, of course, there's all this empty land that had to be built. And I bought a big piece of land, which was the ready mix concrete plant in the east side of the village. And I built, it's about eight or nine high rises there, looking at the city. Now, that was, uh, so I started about 25 years ago. And uh, there was nothing on the land between the bridge, Bird Street Bridge, and where I was, per se. Right now, everything is built. So basically, when you say, what will it look 20 years from now? Well, all I need to do is take a look at, this is a replay. I've seen it happen. Now, this is, why do I think that San Diego, that I th San Diego is going to go through the same thing, only that San Diego has got a better start. We, you know, the, the canvas is already here. All that we need to do now as developers, and I think there is the, Definitely the city is, uh, you know, really wants to see growth in this city. As a matter of fact, they, they want to make sure that if you buy a piece of land, you don't build less than, which is very good. So I think all the pieces are in place here. And like I said, you know, talking earlier, Vancouver had, uh, there was no, not one office building built for 10 years. And in the last five years, there's been about eight or nine office buildings because it was the population moving downtown. I, I like to say the young guys are gonna tell the boss, I don't wanna work where you live. Mm -hmm. I wanna live where we work. And, uh, and that's happening. Yeah, it is happening, isn't it? It's, it's so interesting because unlike what we were taught in planning school where central business districts and downtowns first start with employment and maybe you get some residential. What happened in downtown San Diego with Nat's participation and certainly others is we developed this in incredible residential uh, community And downtown. the rest comes. Yeah. And we're still doing that. I mean, there's thousands of units in the pipeline uh, to be developed in downtown or, or, or under construction today. Can I add but, one? But, but what's missing is, is employment, and that's can, what we're coming That's back. right. Can I add one, one, last, one yeah. last piece to the puzzle? We have some incredible research universities in the San Diego area. To, to see it. None of them have a representation downtown. Of the 35 largest cities in the United States, we're the only one without a major university in downtown San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I point you to the transformation that took place in Mission Bay when UC San Francisco opened their campus. They went from zero in 2000, zero biopharm companies to right. they have 230 and right. 50,000 jobs. And look what's happened in downtown Phoenix. So I would suggest to you that we should all 
be working towards creating an opportunity for one of these great research institutions to have a major presence. So the downtown. research and education infrastructure. That's right. So yeah. now that pipeline of, 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 of ideas and people and companies now starts to grow roots in downtown. Because I think that will be one of the transformational pieces. Yeah, and I, I, I totally agree with you. I think that that's, that, that that's huge. Charlie, I want you to talk about the next 20 years in, of San Diego, because you have a unique perspective, because you've been doing deals in Los Angeles. And a lot of times people ask me, what's the future of San Diego? What is, what's it gonna look like in terms of urban San Diego, our villages which surround downtown? And I say to them, if you want to get a, a sense of what San Diego is going to look like 10 or 20 years from now, go to West LA, where they've densified, but not necessarily vertically in the Nat Bosa sense of vertical, but in the going from one story to two or three or four stories. Is, is that sort of where we're going here in, in San Diego as well, from your perspective, Charlie? I believe it is, Gary, and I, I think that um, looking forward 20 years, first I want to say that the having developers that are willing to take the risk and blaze new trails and be the pioneer to go do things. So, so that, I want to just throw that out there. But I think cities like San Diego have, have already have made the decision and, and put in place uh, the locations and the densification areas that they want. And, and I think we may have chatted about this earlier. There are places within the city that are supposed to be areas that are supposed to be developed as more densely populated areas. But if you go to try to be a developer in those locations, you're going to be, you're going to be stopped. Yeah. <laughs> not, not by the city and not by the city staff, but by the neighborhoods. And that's, that's a tough go. Uh, you know, then the, so the city itself has to find the political will to say, no, that's what we're going to do here. So, uh, so what I see, and we are, we're developing in Hollywood, and Hollywood, you know, if you, and I have lived in San Diego, I lived here for 10 years, and now I have the perspective of looking back, being in LA, looking back at San Diego and seeing both sides. Hollywood is, is LA doesn't really have anything near as nice as, as uh, the gas lamp. And when I drove in here last night, I said, man, this, is, this place is great. San Diego has a great downtown, and LA does, doesn't have anything close to that. Right, and so this, so San Diego has done some really good stuff in in that way, but Hollywood, for LA, is the closest thing to a walkable sort of downtown, I guess, that LA has. Now, downtown LA is coming, but it's not there. So, but what I see is why is Hollywood working? Because people are can live there, they can walk to work, right. they can live there, they can. Uh, take the mass transit, they have a metro line there now, and so there's transportation hubs designated, Hollywood's one of them, right? So what I see is areas developing around San Diego, if they find the political will to uh, take down the barriers, areas developing around transportation hubs that have been designated as areas for higher density, where they can shift densities off, you know, and maybe create open spaces, right? So it's still a nice place, a great place to live. So we take five acres and say, okay, four of these acres or three of them are gonna be open space, but we're gonna give you density over here on two, and you can, you can build very high density on these two acres. And so now we've shifted the density off, but we've got some great open space, but high density at the same time. Well stated, and I think perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll end with that. You know, San Diego is a region that's growing, oh, 30 to 50,000 people a year. It's been that way for a long time. It's gonna continue that way, but we're going through a sea change where we're going from accommodating our growth by growing out to more accommodating our growth by growing up. And so we're going through this sea change in terms of market demand, politically, geographically, in a way that is, to some extent, similar to some of the other communities that some of you who aren't in this town are going through. Uh, we, see, we see pieces of all of America here in, in, in San Diego, sort of uh, trailblazing for us, but not for, say, more urban places like certainly Manhattan or San Francisco or Vancouver or Miami, but in our own way. Uh, we're, going do, we're doing that through fits and starts, but what we do have here is we've got economic diversity, 
Uh, we've got great creative people like the gentleman on these panel, and we've got great weather. So with all of that, we should be probably uh, do pretty good in the coming years. Gentlemen, thank you so much. It was really a treat to moderate this. Are you involved in the maker's quarter? Yes. Fabulous. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I would like to see. Are you guys we thank you, gentlemen, for being the trailblazers uh, for development yeah. and high-rise yeah. development in our city. Um, it's, without folks we have like this, we wouldn't have the skyline we have today they told us and the mixed-use development that we see going forward. So thank you again. One more round of applause, please.